Hi. I want to jump on here today to encourage you. Uh, I know that there are people out there that are still probably watching the news or at least watching enough of it to keep abreast of what's going on. I myself have not been watching anything from the main news media, which is the fake news, as President Trump calls it. Uh, and he is our president, by the way. Um, I just wanted to encourage you to continue to trust in the Lord. Um, the Lord actually tells us to believe him and we will be established and to believe the word of his prophets and uh, we will prosper. So um, those words that come from the prophets of God are, are truly prophetic words. They are prophetic words that no one could possibly know. Oh, you might could conjecture some of them, but there are so many that have seen much of what is happening right now um, in our United States of America, what's going on with the vote and what's going on with the fraud and um, how... Um, even those that have seen that Biden would actually get up and assume uh, the presidency. And it is illegitimate. The vote has not been tabulated. It has not been certified. Um, I believe that this thing will go all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, and I know that if that happens, it's going to be many, many days before we're going to know what uh, what the outcome is. So here's the deal. Here's the problem. In the meantime, we've got to stand firm on what we believe. So that's really what's happening right now. What do you believe? That question is what's actually uh, in the minds and hearts of all of God's people. What do I really believe? Um, and for some of us, like myself, I have absolutely no doubt. Um, I know that I heard the Lord back in March that the enemy wanted to try to move forward his agenda. The enemy is the devil, not the Democrats. Yes, yeah, some of them are being used by the, Dem by the devil, that's for sure. But don't make mistakes that flesh and blood are our enemies because they are not. Um, God wants that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So I pray for many people. There have been many a time. Okay, I'm just going to put myself out there. I have prayed for Nancy Pelosi off and on for the last couple of years. The woman is very clearly demonized. Yes, she is. She is wicked. But there is nothing too hard for our God. Do you understand that all of us at one point in our lives were wicked um, at one point or another in our lives we were lost and without God and without hope in this world and someone prayed for us so I want to continue to encourage you to pray not only for the outcome of the election but to pray for the people of America pray for the, all the people in the world I love that little song we sang when we were kids that God loves all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. So I, uh, I just want to encourage you to stand strong in the prophetic word. So in, in uh, response to that, I, I felt like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to say to the people of God? And he reminded me of the scripture that Paul, in talking to Timothy, in 1 Timothy, the first chapter, this is what he has to say. I'll just read it to you. He says, this charge, which actually means command, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare war a good warfare have you heard a prophet have you heard a prophetic word for yourself or for America then here I'm telling you right now I am here to tell you right now to stand on it to declare it in the face of all doubt 
That is why you're given that prophetic word. It doesn't just fall on you out of heaven. Uh, yeah, many, many of God's prophets have said that Trump is going to serve two terms. The most notable, of course, uh, probably most of you know about is Kim Clement, who have, has gone on a few, several years ago to be with the Lord. And as a young man, he wasn't all that old, I think in his early fifties. So, uh, you know, God, used him to speak a prophetic word to us that God was going to put this man in the presidency. And so I believe right now that we can stand on those prophetic words and we can declare them. The point of that, what is the point of that? Well, the point is, uh, as you go looking further down in that word, uh, it becomes clear. Listen, listen to this right here. So he's charged him to war good warfare by the prophecies that have gone before on him. And then he said, having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. So the Lord does not want you to suffer shipwreck in your faith. Do you know that there are people that they listen to the prophetic word of someone and instead of taking it and believing it and standing upon it and warring a good warfare, they they just think, oh, well, it didn't happen, so that isn't real. Therefore, God must not be real, or some such baloney like that. I mean, when you start going down that line of reasoning, which is from the enemy, of course, um, then you, you just don't know where it might take you. It, it can take you into total shipwreck of your faith. So I'm here to tell you, don't be shipwrecked. Don't be defeated. Don't feel discouraged because things are not happening exactly the way you thought they would happen. I believe that Trump has had a landslide, and I believe that we have taken the House and the Senate. But you know what? The enemy is trying to make us all think that it hasn't happened. We know that he was winning. But you know what? It doesn't have to go exactly the way we plan. It goes the way our God wants it to go. I think he's using this as a great uncovering, an uncovering of all of the evil and the wickedness and the plotting, the scheming, the lying that has been going on, the cheating, the coup that has actually been happening in our country that's making us look like a third world country, okay? We are not some little third world government that someone goes and takes and, and takes over the country, through a, a military coup or through a vote. So listen to this, okay? So it goes on from there and it says, having faith and a good conscience when some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I delivered to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. I read that yesterday in studying for this word that the Lord was giving me. And I was shocked because it doesn't say that they were doing something blatant. It says that they had blasphemed the word of the Lord, a prophetic word. I want to warn the church right now, the ecclesia or the ecclesia, which is God's true remnant believers who love him, who are sold out to him. I want to just warn you right now not to speak words that are contrary to the prophetic words that have come forth. They are words from the Lord. And now is the time we war a good warfare through those prophetic words. So he actually said that they were blaspheming. So you think about it. If something is a word from God and you say it is a word from the devil or you say that was not a word from God, that was a word from a man's own spirit or a man's own mind or his own wicked heart. He prophesied that out of his own heart. Beware lest you find yourself blaspheming God's word. I am not saying any of you are. I'm just saying 
be careful. This is the days of when we must be careful. It goes on to say why we are to war good warfare. He said, therefore. So I always look at when therefore, well, why is the therefore therefore? Okay, so it is in relation to the verses we've just read. It goes right into the second chapter. Man was the one that put that chapter two in there, not Paul. When Paul wrote it, it was one letter. So he goes on, he says, Therefore I exhort you, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. In other words, don't blaspheme the true prophetic words of the Lord because their purpose is to war a good warfare so that we can have peaceful lives by praying for leaders, by praying that those leaders will be directed by God, and by praying that in their peaceful, quiet lives, we can quietly, peacefully have the presence of mind to go forth and minister to people and not be worried and fretting about the things of this life. And so we can go forth and bless people and lead people into salvation so that all will come to the knowledge of the truth. That is the will of the Lord. Um, in Joshua in his first battle, I want to just turn there real quickly in Joshua, the sixth chapter. This is the first battle that Joshua had to overcome. It was the walls of Jericho. Now, this was something that only God could do. This is miraculous. I think we're going to see miraculous intervention. I believe that with all of my heart church be encouraged god wants to let things get to the point that they look impossible but the things that are impossible with man are possible with god hallelujah so over in judges the sixth chapter god is he is uh telling jericho the battle he's tell, telling joshua the plan the battle plan to take jericho and so in the 10th verse he says now joshua had commanded the people saying you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Then a few verses later, and the seventh time, that's the seventh time they went around the walls. It happened when the priests blew the trumpets and Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And guess what? They shouted. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout. Hallelujah. That the wall, walls fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. What was so important about that? Well, they spent seven days going around the city. And during those seven days, God knew how that could seem so senseless. He knew his people. He knew as they went around that wall, they went out once today. Can you just hear them now? If they wanted to talk, if they were able to talk, if they were disobedient, they go, what are we doing this for? This is so crazy. This, this is goofy. Why in the world are we going around this wall? Then they went out and they did it again the next day. And then they did it the next day. And then they did it the next day. By now, by day five, they did it the next day. That's day five. It's getting kind of old. And then the sixth day is like, um, okay, 
Something's wrong with our leader. Can you imagine the things that, that would have come out of their mouths? God doesn't want anything like that coming out of our mouths at this time. What is wrong with the prophets? They haven't heard God. They were all wrong. Don't you see? Biden has already been declared president. I have news for you. He has not been declared president. It has not been certified. It is amazing to me the lengths to which God is allowing the enemy to take these people to the absurdity, to the audacity. It's such a crazy behavior that in a country where we know how it's supposed to be done, we have laws. And instead of obeying the laws, they have just asserted that they are the next president-elect. That is amazing to me. But God is allowing it, not so that we'll be discouraged, but so that we will continue to stand. If President Trump ever needed you to stand right now, that's it. He needs you. He needs you to stand right now. But what's happening? I believe God is sorting his people. He's trying to find out who is battle worthy and who is not. Does that make sense? Who is going to be able to fight, to stand in the day of battle, and who will not? That's a solemn thought, a warning. Wow. I'm really amazed sometimes at what comes out of my mouth, but I really believe that God is allowing us all to be tested right now. Are you going to stand on His Word? Are you going to believe his prophets? Are you going to believe in the Lord? You know, we've been expecting for God to bring a great revival and do miracles and see limbs grow out and bones mended and limbs straightened and backs healed and cripples walk and blind eyes open, and deaf ears hear. There are so many miracles God is wanting to do through his church. Oh, wow. But what's happening right now is he is letting us all be tested to see, are you going to be able to carry that kind of anointing? Are you going to be able to stand in the face of opposition and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Devil, come out right now in Jesus' name. So that's why he's telling us right now to keep silent. You know, in Judges, the sixth chapter, we have another example of a man named Gideon. And Gideon was a guy that was scared of the Midianites. And he was threshing out a gra the grain in a wine press so that he wouldn't get found. Because it wasn't the harvesting of grapes time. It was the threshing out of wheat. So you don't thresh out your wheat in a wine press. But over in Judges 6, you see that um, while he's doing this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and called him a mighty man of valor. And he's just like, who, me? Yeah, basically, in Judges 6.15, he said to him, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So he's saying, Hey, why are you picking me? Well, you know what? God used that man to save Israel by a mighty strong arm and a mighty deliverance. 
And you know how he did it? He did it by whittling down his army from 33,000 just in the very beginning. He said, I want you to tell everybody that's afraid to go home. And 22,000 people left. Can you imagine? 22,000 people went home. And you think after that, oh, wow, how am I going to have a military? I've only got 10,000 people, 11,000 people left. And you know what happened after that? He said, you still got too many. God said, I want you to take them all down to the water. And the ones that bring the water up to their hand, to their mouth, and lap like a dog, those are the ones I'm going to save you by. And there, it turned out there were only 300 of them. But you know what he told him to do? It's quite a long story, and I won't go into it. But what he actually told him to do was... Uh, I want you to arm these men with pitchers that are going to go down over top of a lit torch, okay, and a trumpet, and go out and divide up into three different groups of a hundred, and I want you to do what, he said, you tell them to do what I do and say what I say. And so this is what happened in the 7th chapter and the 16th verse. He divided the 300 men into three companies. He put a trumpet into every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. And he said to them, look at me and do likewise. Watch. And when I come up to the edge of the camp, you do as I do. And he said to them, um, or when I, I'm sorry, when I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets on every side of the whole camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So, in the middle of the, in the very beginning of the middle watch, which is around about midnight, interestingly enough, and they posted a watch in the, in the camp of the enemies, and when they posted their watch, that's when they attacked. That's when Gideon and his 300 men attacked. And uh, they, they blew the trumpets and they broke their pitchers that were in their hands. So what happens is, I can't imagine how much noise that makes when you break that many clay pots. And then you're holding up these torches in three different divisions around about the enemy. And, you know, the amazing thing was that they were, they were as uh, numberless as uh, the sand on the seashore, it said. So the enemy was just everywhere, down below them. And so that's what they did. And every man, that's what they did. They broke the torches, or sorry, they, they blew the trumpet, and they broke the pitchers, and they held up their torches in their left hand and blew the trumpet in their right hand, and they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Well, that sword of the Lord is the word of God. Hallelujah. And every man stood in his place all around the camp, and the whole camp ran and cried out and fled. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in verse 23, And the men of Israel gathered together from Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, and pursued the Midianites. You know what's awesome? Is after he sent all those people home, when they got the enemy on the run, all these other people who had gone home turned around and went after them and helped rout the enemy. It says that they turned on each other, all of these, and began to kill one another. It's just truly amazing. You see a very similar story over in, um, uh, let's see, First, Second Chronicles. It's a wonderful story. Let me just see if I can find it in my notes here. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot something. I just wanted to tell you something. God's raising you up like Gideon's 300. Just thought I'd tell you that. So, anyway, in um, 2 Chronicles 20, we see that the armies had come out against Israel. And this time it's Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat fell on his face before God. They fasted. They prayed. And they said, Lord, we are not able to go up against all these enemies. You've got to help us. 
And this was God's response through a prophet. He raised up a prophet. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. In verse 17 of Second Chronicles 20, they, he says, he continues to them, You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against him, them, for the Lord is with you. So in verse 20 it says, They rose early in the morning, and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, he set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude. Do you know what had happened? They had all turned on one another, and they destroyed one another. And when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. There were three days in picking up the spoils of the war that they had not had to fight in. All they had to do was sing and rejoice. Well, I want to tell you something. I'm just going to read you what I've got right here. God is raising up an army like Gideon's 300, and they're going to be way makers for those who love God but were afraid of the enemy. There are many of our beloved brothers and sisters right now that are afraid but those of you who are not afraid are going to be like Gideon's 300 you're going to be so full of the joy of the Lord and the peace of God they're not going to understand you but you just keep standing because when the enemy is routed they're going to come running with you and they're going to help you they're going to be standing in the battle with you the 300 are going to have torches and trumpets in their hands and the sword of the Lord in their mouths just like the Lord when he comes he's going to have a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth because why he is the word of God all of you who pass this test are going to be used mightily in the move of God's glory that is about to fall on America Woo! <laughs> hallelujah you will be apostles and prophets to thousands. You will raise up many sons and daughters who will be mightier even than you have been. Be careful in this time. Be careful not to criticize or belittle the fearful and the unbelieving in your heart. Let the love of God keep you and flow through you. Many will end up supporting you in one way or another. Please be encouraged today. Please don't feel defeated. I just want to say that God is in charge of this thing. Find your position. Get in it and stand still. Sing songs. Sing songs of praise to your God. The one thing I want to tell you, though, is take heed what you hear. Jesus said that to his disciples. Take heed what you're listening to. If you are depressed, discouraged, feeling defeated, feeling low, feeling downcast, maybe you're listening to the wrong voices. I'm just going to tell you, turn off the news. Turn it 
off. Nothing has been decided. The election has not been called. It is not, the votes have not been completely counted. Stop worrying, fretting, and start singing. Stop listening to the wrong words. Get in the Word of God. Read the Psalms. Read the Scriptures. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Okay? Do that. Do that. And you're going to come out strong in the end of this. He spoke clear to me clearly to me back in March the 22nd you can go back on my Facebook page and you can look at that on March 22nd I cried out to God when COVID hit and I said Lord is this you is this judgment from you is the end about to come and he said no no this is not from me this is from the enemy he's trying to stop my church in their tracks he's trying to stop the revival from coming you stand against it and i've been standing ever since i've fasted i've prayed i've cried out to god i've got up in the night seasons i've cried out in the middle of the night sometimes i haven't known what to make of all that's happening but i'll tell you this i know that my god is in charge of all this he's got this i know it is not over i know that god's plan is perfect and don't be discouraged so listen those who fear beg from god those who believe declare his word do you want to know where you are then listen to your prayers are you crying and begging there is a wonderful time for crying out for God's mercy and I've done plenty of that but begging I don't do I find God's word and I stand on it and I'm not talking about just looking through the scriptures and getting any old word I get scriptures that come alive to me do you know what I'm saying? Like they kind of jump off the page. They they ignite my spirit. They make me feel like saying, yes, yes. And those are the words I stand on. So, those who fear, beg from God. Those who believe, declare his word. Press in. This is not the time to give up. Don't let the devil make you abort your place, and your assignment in the coming revival. I love you. God bless you.